My first car was a boat. Okay, not like an actual boat, just one of those huge Oldsmobiles from the 80s that might as well have been straight from an episode of Spongebob. I bought it for practically nothing from my neighbor Bill, who wanted to see it go to a good home. It used to be his mom's car, and she basically only ever drove to the grocery store, so it was in great condition, and it meant a lot to him. He's a really nice guy. Actually, embarrassing moment side tangent. One day after school, I pulled into my garage and took a couple minutes to look at something on my phone before I got out of the car. Bill came over to talk to me about something, but I didn't see him, and I ended up looking at my phone for a long time. But he had already walked into the garage to talk to me, and I don't think he expected me to just sit there for so long. Anyway, I eventually looked up to open the door, locked eyes with him, and screamed like a little girl. Okay, so my car was in good condition, but it was made in 1984. It could have kids by now. Well, they'd probably only be power wheels, but still. Most kids at my school had way nicer cars. I mean, this was a public school, so it's not like they had Lambos, but they might as well have. It was a running joke with my friends that my car didn't have horsepower, it had hamster power. Some cars have enough horses that if you floor it, you'll get thrown back so hard your hair changes color. But when I floored it, my hair stayed the same. The weird thing is, when you put it into park, it kind of lurched forward like it was ready to go. Where was that enthusiasm 10 minutes ago? I don't really care about cars though, so I was never embarrassed or anything. I loved that car, and how could I not? It was my first. When I got it, our garage had lots of boxes and stuff, so we kept my car in the driveway for the whole neighborhood to see. That's how not embarrassed I was. One night, I was sitting in my room and I got the sudden urge to do something, anything. I just needed to get out of the house. My mom was already asleep, but that just meant an opportunity to practice the art of doing things you're not supposed to, trademark. I texted my friend Ryan to see if he wanted to be my partner in crime for the night. While I wait for him to text back, did you know that my brother's name is Ryan too? Crazy! Also, he and his kids watch my videos, but, and I've got the evidence right here, one of them watches Logan Paul. Sorry, Connor, looks like I can only shout out Jace. Oh, I didn't send it. So, my friend texted me back and was totally down to hang out. I climbed out of my window and snuck around the house to my car. But here's the problem. If I shut the car door or start the engine in the driveway, the sound will wake everybody up. To get away with this, I needed to get the car down the street as quietly as possible. I picked him up and parked at the library between the river and FedEx on Capitol Boulevard in downtown Boise, Idaho. You know the one. We walked around for a bit, and you won't believe who we ran into. Nobody. Cities are surprisingly boring at night, and it was kinda cold, so we went back to the car. I turned right onto Capitol from the library parking lot when suddenly a cop car flew across the bridge and blocked me. How did he know I was sneaking out? <sighs> okay, I put the car into park. Put your hands in the air! I know it was only one cop, but I might as well have had five stars in GTA with a helicopter and everything. The cop came over to my window and asked if I knew why he pulled us over. I actually had no idea, so he helped me out with a little pop quiz. Which way does Capitol go? Capitol Boulevard is a one-way. Capitol Boulevard is a one-way. While the cop was on the phone tattling to my mom, Ryan goes, Can I put my hands down yet? Do you want to die? The cop was actually pretty nice, and he let us leave with just a warning. That's when we decided to go on the run. We escaped into the night, never to be seen again. Just kidding, Ryan actually didn't get into trouble because the cop didn't call his mom. So when we got back to my street, I made him get out and walk the mile and a half back to his place. It seemed fair. Hello, Timothy. Oh, hey, mom. What were you doing out so late, Timothy? Uh, you know. You're in big trouble, Timothy. Honestly, I'm not sure where this is going, I just wanted to use that voice. My mom actually wasn't too mad. But the next day, when I got home from school, the garage was completely cleaned out. It finally had enough room for my car, which meant no more late night adventures. And remember how I thought I didn't send that text to Ryan about sneaking out? I actually did send it to my brother Ryan. And of course, he told my mom, which means I would have gotten caught no matter what. The universe is a vast and cruel mistress. Fast forward a couple years, and I got myself a bona fide J-O-B. 
I don't know why I said it like that, but I was moving to Montana, which might explain it. My mom was worried about her little baby boy living on his own for the first time, so she bought me all of the things. Pots, pans, towels, the whole nine. I wanted to wait until I got there to buy stuff as I needed it, but she didn't listen, so I blame her for what happened next. Also, thanks for the stuff, mom. We loaded up my precious Oldsmobile with all of my new heavy things and ventured north. Oh hey, pro tip, don't move in the winter. We hit a terrible blizzard and the old mobile just couldn't handle it. It was so overworked from pushing through the snow and carrying all that heavy stuff that the engine seized up entirely and we had to junk the whole car just two hours from my new apartment. When my mom told our neighbor Bill that his mom's old car had broken down, Bill said that his mom was actually from Montana, so it was kind of like it had gone back to be with her, which I thought was really sweet. Also, did you notice how the Boise Library sign has an exclamation point? It actually has that in real life because we love books!